All right, uh, just uh, catching up here. We have put uh, start putting in the chat where you're from. Feel free to continue that. We're going to wait a few more minutes uh, to get started. Give a little bit more time for uh, folks to arrive. Usually have a few later arrivals, so uh, let's give it a few more minutes while we're doing that. What I'd like to ask you now is to start posting some questions uh, that you would like to get answered in this. Uh, uh, what why you've showed up? What uh, what you want to hear? Questions you have, and uh, we'll find out so soon enough if I'm going to be answering those questions. And if not, we're going to leave time at the end to answer a bunch of questions. So uh, go ahead with the questions, please. Couple questions rolling in. We will be answering those as we can throughout the webinar. Also, uh, I will cover uh, what we didn't catch at the end if I did not answer it throughout. And I'm not I'm not afraid to answer questions two or three times. So, feel too bad about that. So we got one question in the chat that we are not covering in the presentation. So I'll catch that while we have a minute here. Uh, question was, can we uh, get a tour of the campus? We have not gone personally and uh, you can indeed get a sneak peek of campus and under undergraduate admissions has a page for that. And uh, probably simplest way we could put the link into the chat, but simplest way you could also just Google virtual tour, Purdue virtual tour, and that'll pop right up for him. All right, I'm going to give it about one more minute here, and then we're going to get go ahead and get started. Appreciate all of the patience and look forward to hopefully delivering some useful information to you. One uh, additional common question I'm going to answer uh, before we get started is, uh, will this be recorded? And yes, it's going to be recorded. We're going to post it on our website, um, perhaps as early as tomorrow. Also, we'll go on the parents' Facebook pages. Part of the plan, if we can get that to work. So, uh, get that out of the way. We're going to also answer some common questions is uh, what is early start? So you may have tuned in to be like, I don't understand Dave, what is this? Uh, we get a lot of what classes am I going to take? Um, I, I believe there's a couple in here, probably some confusion exactly. How do credit hours and those sort of things work? I'll cover that just a little bit. And uh, where will I live? A lot of variations of housing questions. We're going to touch on that as well. So I think we are 805 now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get us started here. And we'll flip on over from the smiling faces on slide one. We're gonna go ahead and flip on over here to uh, slide two. So I wanna first uh, uh, note we have a contributor behind the scenes, Anna Patterson, who's helping us out today. Uh, appreciate Anna answering questions and helping out on the chat and facilitating all this. The uh, other presenters that are going to be here today. I'm going to introduce uh, 
Well, I'll let her introduce herself, our director, Leela Mixon. Hello, everyone. I am Leela Mixon. I'm the director of the Office of Summer and Winter Sessions, and I'm excited that you're here tonight. I am a longtime employee of Purdue University, several years. I'm also a Purdue alum, mom alum. So I'm really excited that you're interested in attending Early Start and learning more about our program. Hi, my name is Avery Brooks. Um, I'm currently a freshman and I'm majoring in planetary science and geology. Um, and I was in early start last summer, so summer of 23. Thanks, Avery. Leela, and by the way, uh, Avery is going to be one of our peer mentors this summer. So she's uh, had such a great experience. She's going to be giving it back this year. And we're very appreciative of having her with us to provide you with that student perspective. Is this one thing coming from me, but from a student who's actually lived it, it's a fantastic opportunity. I appreciate that. So uh, we are, uh, I'll introduce myself. I'm Dave Ivey. I've probably uh, met a few of you and traded emails with a few of you. I'm an interim assistant director of New Beginners. And that just simply means that uh, I'm focused on incoming first year students and uh, their summer and uh, uh, we're gonna be uh, trying to get you to uh, come join us for early start today. And that's pretty much my focus. Um, I want to also note that we're representing the office of summer and winter session. And that means that uh, we want you to know that there are classes in summer and uh, winter. Uh, obviously, you know that there are classes in fall and spring, uh, but we want to focus on this uh, particular uh, webinar on early start, which is uh, what it sounds like is uh, incoming freshmen are going to have an early start to their Purdue career. So what is Early Start? Let me jump into that. Early Start is simply summer classes taken either online or in person by first year students. You're literally getting an early start in your first year. Our focus in this webinar will primarily be on the five week period starting July 6th. Uh, that is when our uh, main uh, event starts, if you will, for Early Start July 6th. And I wanna emphasize uh, that this five week uh, period starting July 6, it's not a camp. This is actually starting your freshman year. You're taking classes up to nine credit hours, which uh, for those of you not familiar with credit hours, it's about three classes during what is a condensed semester. So five weeks versus what a typical uh, fall and spring would be is 16 weeks. Uh, that uh, we're gonna deliver that same content. The, your instructors will deliver the same content you would get in 16 weeks in those five weeks. Uh, so it's condensed. That happens because classes meet daily rather than maybe every other day in the fall or spring, and there's a little more time uh, for each class. Uh, in the next several slides, we're going to talk about the benefits to early start. But I want to mention one thing on this slide. We use the word innovative purposefully because this is an award-winning program. Uh, we're very proud of it. Been a couple of awards, one national and international awards. Uh, so it's uh, been a been a tried and true uh, program for you. So again, why should you join Early Start? Well, that's a great question. Glad you're asking. We're going to start on this page with the social benefits, um, and I want you to note uh, the social component is primarily geared for the in-person participants. So those of you that are coming to campus starting that July six. Those living on campus and not uh, doing the exclusively online early start. Now, don't fret. I want you to know that there are plenty of benefits to both online and in person, but I certainly want to encourage you all to do in person if at all possible. Uh, but uh, I don't want to get out of myself. We'll talk more about those other benefits. So let's let's uh, get over. First of all, why are we? Uh, why do we care about social benefits? It's about getting a degree, right? And. Uh, Absolutely, it's about getting a great degree, but we all recognize that starting a new thing is hard. Um, I had a student who put it pretty succinctly to me uh, when she was talking about her start at Purdue, that she has not had to make new friends since kindergarten. So you may notice that, uh, you know, the starting getting a new friend is, is not necessarily the easiest thing 
Um, and we want to uh, try very hard to uh, help uh, facilitate that. And um, why is that important, new friends and such? Well, it's, it's difficult to be successful somewhere when you don't like being there. And uh, Purdue's super aware of that. And because of that, we want to emphasize building community, given uh, all of your students a sense of belongingness. And uh, as it says on the slide, find your people. And that's that's going to make your experience so much better and help with that anxiety and such. And so uh, I want to go into how does early start support community building? Well, uh, a significant piece is the peer mentor and uh, the peer mentor group, so the mentee group for that peer mentor. And I'm going to bring in Avery back for a second here to talk about her peer mentor, her mentee group that she was with. Uh, and Avery, if you could talk about early start and how, how it helped finding your people. Okay, so um, as all of you will probably be like in the summer, um, this was my first time being alone. So it was definitely like a hard um, experience when I first got there, I was very terrified, but um, my peer mentor's name was Alayla. And to me, she's like my older sister, which is really good. She makes me feel um, really safe. Um, when I first got there, she immediately made me feel like I belonged at Purdue um, and she showed me the ropes. Um, she continues to be a huge support in my time at Purdue. So it's not just in the summer that your peer mentor will be there for you. They're always going to be there for you. They still are there for me even throughout uh, my fall and spring semesters. Um, my mentee group um, was also full of the most amazing people. Um, you slowly learn about everyone and then your bond just keeps growing over time. You do all these fun events together. You learn about each other. It's great. Um, I met two of my best friends there and we hang out all the time. So it was definitely the most rewarding experience of my life. So. Excellent. Very good. Thank you, Avery. You're welcome. All right, so we talked social benefits. We dug into that a little bit. Let's go into that academic benefit piece. And I mentioned here the higher summer GPAs. Many students tend to do well in the summer. It's uh, that's a good thing. It's a good to, to start with a good base to start your academic career and also get more comfortable with the academic rigor. Um, I will note very proudly that our average summer 2023 GPA was a 3.66. Out of four, those of the those of you who are using 4.0 skills or otherwise, this is 3.66 out of four, with more than half of our students earning a 4.0. That's a pretty good thing. Starting seven, eight, nine credit hours uh, on your transcript to see that. A lot of that is uh, based on the pace of class. That's the popular theory. Uh, obviously, 16 weeks versus five weeks. Five weeks. Uh, example I like to give is imagine on a Monday you are given some material in a class and in a 16 week semester, it may be 4 weeks before you have a test on that uh, material. In summer, if you have the material on Monday, you're very likely going to have a test on that Friday. So it's very hard for that you know, information to disappear. You're going to have a. Uh, some pretty good uh, recall on that it just happened very recently and also you're you're pretty immersed in that material. Uh, for the full five weeks. Now, I also want to note that summer classes opens the door for plenty of opportunities. Um, you may have a lighter class load during difficult semesters is a popular thing to uh, uh, have. So let's just say, for example, you're going to have a calculus three and a chemistry and a biology and 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 um, instead of maybe taking five classes or, or six classes, maybe take four classes or five classes so you can focus a little bit more. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be, uh, you know, putting yourself in a position to open up potentially space for a second major or add a, that minor certificate, the study abroad, co-op internships. These are popular things. Participate in learning communities, clubs, and organizations. Lots of benefits if you do early start. So then, let's move on to financial benefits and. Uh, some of you might be here at this webinar because you've already been awarded a summer scholarship. If so, congratulations. That's fantastic. 
Hopefully this webinar will help you decide to take advantage of that scholarship. But in any event, you will notice there's a QR code up there, and that's an opportunity to uh, apply for a $500 scholarship. So I'll leave this up here for a few moments while I talk. Also keeping in mind that this is gonna be posted later. And if you just can't get it and, and you need a link or something, uh, reach back out to me at the end of this, this uh, presentation. I'm gonna post our emails uh, or my the Think Summer email up there so you'll know exactly how to get a hold of this and say, Dave, I wanna, I wanna get that QR code again or, or the link. Um, also gonna note that there is a thing called Scholarship Universe. Uh, this is a fantastic thing Purdue's put together. If you would like to find Scholarship Universe, I would simply just Google Purdue and Scholarship Universe pops right up the first thing. Um, also, uh, that, that will uh, show you the way to potential, potential other scholarships, whether fall, summer, et cetera. Um, and don't forget uh, also the summer aid application. Good news is you don't have to do another FAFSA. I know that's been some drama this summer um, or this spring. We haven't got summer yet, but uh, I know there's been a lot of drama with the FAFSA. You don't have to do another one. You do just need to simply add that supplemental uh, uh, summer aid application, and uh, you can reach that your in your my Purdue. And let's just not uh, forget as well that if you take classes during the summers, there's a potential you might be able to do another thing called early graduation, uh, and that's a great thing because you'll be spending less money on your tuition, which uh, that's that's a win, of course. Uh, and if you graduate early, you might be able to get a job early and start earning money sooner. So you kind of have both, uh, get it on both ways. Okay, while we're on the subject of, of uh, finances, I'm gonna talk about affordability. affordability. Um, I'll note one major thing here is you can maximize your benefit by taking nine credit hours. It's a flat rate from six to nine credit hours. Uh, and let me just do a, a quick math walkthrough for you for, and this is where I wanna kind of cover credit hours a little bit as well. Uh, credit hours, if you're not familiar with it, is, is sort of the university's uh, way of measuring how much, how many classes you've taken, how far along you've gotten. So in a typical, and bear with me while I kind of walk through this for a moment, so the typical uh, bachelor's degree, you're going to need 120 credit hours about to graduate. Um, the standard pace of doing 120 credit hours is going to be four years or eight semesters at 15 credit hours per semester. And I mention all this to kind of give you an idea of what it means to actually be taking uh, nine credit hours in five weeks is that's about 60% of a semester that you're going to knock out there. Imagine that you do that for three summers, like Avery's gonna be already at two summers. Uh, she will, after this summer, uh, or if she does choose to do a third summer as well, if she does three summers and nine credit hours, that's just about a year's worth of classes that you just knocked out. Uh, so you can see very easily how uh, you get the, some pretty good value out of that. So I'm going to, again, bring back Avery to talk a bit about it, uh, what, uh, what she says about Early Start. There's a couple of quotes on the screen you're welcome to look at, but we're going to ask uh, Avery to share her Early Start story, talk about her grades, her sense of belonging, community building. And uh, I know I'm giving you a mouthful, Avery, I can uh, re, re say this, but uh, how, did, how did Early Start impact your attitude about Purdue and your fall preparation? So uh, as much of that as you can cover, thanks. Okay. So first, I'm going to talk about um, the events, at, so the fun things that you can do at Purdue. So um, when you first get to Purdue, you are going to get um, handed a packet. And on that packet, it has a list of events that you can do um, through like PSUB, the Purdue Student Union Board. Um, so I'm so glad that they gave me that packet because on that packet, um, I went to, I think most, if not all of the events, but my favorite event that I went to was um, Tropicanoe Cove. It's a water park. It's a, in Lafayette, it's local, but they took buses and we all went down there and we all swam and it was um, really fun because I went with my group and that's also how you can bond 
but just going to those events are super crucial because you're not just there in the summer to get credit hours. You're there to um, find your belonging here at Purdue and build your community because the people here, um, especially in the summer, are the best people. Um, so yeah, just go to the events. You're not just there for your grades. So um, talking about the academic side of things, my grades, I took, so I'm in honors and I took nine credit hours in the summer. And a typical day for me was I would, I had a 730, so I had three classes and most people I seen in the chat, they ask, um, is it busy? Like, will I have free time and stuff? So I took an honors class, an EAPS class, and a so sociology class. Um, and I had plenty of time. So I would go to my classes and I would study and walk. It's a very nice building here at Purdue for studying. Um, very quiet. Definitely recommend that. Um, so I would go there and study, but my group, my peer mentor, we would have lunch or dinner and then probably go to an event and I would still have plenty of time to finish my homework and study for whatever tests I have at the end of the week. Um, academic wise, it is not super fast paced. So you're not, even though your classes are condensed into like five or six weeks, you're not going to be rushing through the material. You're not going to have a hard time um, catching up. And if so, just communicate with your um, professors because that they are really, I don't want to say lenient, but they're always there for you, which is really great. Um, and then what else did you, what other question was there? Uh, how did that impact your transition to fall? Oh, and my attitude. Is that another yeah, question? Yeah, how, how it, how it impacted you moving from fall to, or summer to fall, how, how ready were you and such? Okay. The classes, like I said, um, were not very p fast paced, but it definitely it prepared me a lot. And it's not just the academic side, it's the simple things, just like learning how to be on your own for the first time, not having your parents with you, um, just simple things like learning how to get your own food, learning how to order, um, learning how to just get to class because this is a big campus and you are going to have to walk pretty far. So, um, don't worry, we make sure that you won't get lost. Um, but just simple things like that definitely helped me transition into fall. Um, and for my attitude at Purdue, mainly the community here affects my attitude and I'm proud to be a Boilermaker. I definitely was in the summer and it just made me like grow my school spirit, so. I loved early start. Fantastic. All right, so we're going to go dig in a little bit more to talk about life on campus. So let me paint the picture for you in the next few slides of what early start will look like. Uh, some of you, so as Avery was just talking about, some of you, uh, maybe the students I'm referring to specifically, maybe living independently for the first time. And there's a bunch of logistics that goes into that, uh, that I, I've had students uh, feedback from them about just setting alarms and waking up in the morning, doing laundry, making sure you get fed, figuring out the resources, lay of the land and such. I want to put a plug in really quickly because uh, the question will come up later on, but feel free to Google Purdue and packing list. The first results you're going to find is going to be university residences here at Purdue has a pretty good list of suggested items to bring, things that you can, can't bring. Um, and early starts and your peer mentor and RAs will help you figure out campus and these logistics. So as Avery was talking about, uh, the, the peer mentor is gonna be able to help show you around buildings and such. We wanna make sure that you know where your classes and such are. These logistics, uh, we can get you helped out with in an early start. Uh, you explore, do all the things, a fairly common question uh, that I get sometimes, I'll just uh, drop in here now, is how many in incoming freshmen do this? 
Uh, we've had upwards 750 to 1,000 incoming freshmen. I anticipate this year we'll have at least 500 or so of in-person students and, and two or 300 more online students. So uh, if you just kind of do the, the math, 50,000 students during fall and spring versus that freshman cohort that we'll have coming in this summer of you know maybe 500 or so in person, it's a, a significantly different number. There will be other people on on campus, uh, so upperclassmen like Avery, for example, are going to be taking classes and such, and not all are going to be involved with our program. So it's it's not a deserted island sort of a scenario. Uh, there are though enough people to make it interesting, and and we have, as Avery just talked about, quite a quite a good time with the folks there. And we're going to talk about activities a little bit more specifically in the next slide or two. Um, for context, and this is uh, for those of you that are like, hey, summer, winter classes, I don't know. Um, there was over 14,000 undergraduate students who took summer courses last year. A lot of those were online, so obviously we didn't have the, pot, the campus full of students, but that's, it's kind of the norm. A lot of students do this, and those of you who are on this webinar now, I'm excited that you're going to uh, hopefully join us this summer and get that started uh, quickly. So I'm going to kick it back to Avery again for a second. Uh, what, what, Avery? What kind of su summer fun stuff do you recall? The activities and such you talked about for a minute about uh, going to the the water park and such. What are the things do you remember uh, that we did? And and uh, maybe uh, talk about your dorm life. What it looked like inside the dorm and and the activities and those sort of things. Okay. So there is so, like I said, that packet, there was a lot of events that you could go to. Um, and some of them weren't even on the packet. So like it says on the slide, um, I went to the talent show. That was really fun. There was one on Slater Hill and everyone just sits there and watches. And it's really nice because it's warm and you just meet new people every time you go to these events. But we always had movie nights. There was trivia where you could, um, if you won, you could get real money just for answering Disney trivia. So that was always fun to go to. But there were some events that weren't on the packet. Like all the time in Memorial Mall, there was like bouncy castles. And <laughs> um, a, I made a Frisbee that you could paint. But you would be surprised about like the amount of adults that <laughs> love to go on the bouncy castles i did so those are always fun and it's not you don't just have fun um in like those events i also took eeps 105 i took the planets because that's like in my major but we went outside and did a lot of fun projects and stuff and it's very hands-on most of the classes that you're going to do um and then for dorm life, I've seen a lot of questions about um, if you're going to stay in the same dorm that you're in for summer, and that's no. Um, even if you're an honor student like me, I was placed in Meredith South for the summer, and I was in a double, but I didn't have a roommate, so I don't know what went on there, but it was very nice. Um, the rooms, your dorms, are going to be, especially for Meredith South, they're going to be very nice, but also you're going to build your own community within your dorm and your floor as well. You're going to see those people every day, all the time. So I also made some good friends on my floor because they were also in my classes too. So I would go eat with them. You're always meeting new people. You're always making new friends and you'll see them in the fall too and you'll say like hi how how are you and stuff so you're always getting to know um more people and then did you say dining courts is that okay? uh, sure go ahead yeah if you have okay. something to say about and then for dining courts i know there's like two or three open and they also have retail and walk um but the food is always good there's the good thing about early start is there's never there's never lines for food like in fall or spring so you can always count on getting good food and then 
the ice cream at Purdue. That's another good thing. <laughs> Purdue has the best ice cream, especially in the summer when it's hot. So, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Thanks, Avery. Okay, so uh, uh, one more uh, item about uh, life on campus during the summer. We talk about rigor a lot at Purdue, and that just means how difficult the classes are. Um, and we're not uh, not upset that the classes are difficult because that means that a Purdue degree means something. If it's not easy, then uh, people certainly respect it. And, and that's obviously to your benefit when you come out of Purdue. You tell people that you're Purdue graduated and carry some weight. Um, now, reality is many of you are very good students and a lot of you have never had to study before. Well, you're going to have to do that at Purdue. Uh, that's that's one of the bigger pieces of the transition. Um, and the good news is, is we're going to help direct you to the tools and the resources to help make you successful. Purdue really does want you to succeed. It's not about throwing you in at uh, the deep end. Uh, Purdue is going to uh, provide a ton of resources, and I, I list a couple on this slide, but I'll go through a quick recap of, of a more full uh, list of academic resources. There's the Academic Success Center, Biology Help Room, Chemistry Resource Room, a thing called COSINE, which is uh, where you have math, chemistry, and biology one-on-one -on -one tutoring available, math resource room, a physics help center, online writing lab, Purdue Presentation Center, Stats Help Room, and Supplemental Instruction. And uh, as Avery had mentioned here, in academic uh, settings, it's also an opportunity to continue to build that community. You're going to want to talk to the classmates and talk to the people that uh, you're doing these supports with so that uh, you can continue to uh, get that sense of belonging that we're be, you know, really, really eager to get you to have. There's academic support uh, as well. So the co-rec, that's uh, the uh, recreational facility here on campus. They have not just your standard gym and swimming pool and uh, climbing wall, those kind of things are fantastic. That's a great resource, but they also have a really robust wellness and nutrition program. Uh, so you'll look into that when you get here. Um, Disability Resource Center off uh, the, the uh, Office of the Dean of Students. There's financial aid, Bursar. CAPS, which is Counseling and Psychological Services, PUSH, that's the Purdue University Student Health Center. And um, I, I want to note, it's sort of a theme with what Avery's saying and, and as well as the resources is, the resources are only resources if you show up. So you, you have to, uh, with your uh, floor mates and such, show up, uh, put yourself out there is a phrase, that I, a recurring phrase I've heard from students that have been successful is when you get here, you got to decide to do the things that you need to do, which is going to be get to know people, go to events, and uh, actually go to the resources as well. So Avery, can you talk about an academic resource? Do you do you use any? And, and if so, uh, what's your experience with it? Yes, so I, um, I kind of made a mistake in my summer and I definitely learned from it. Um, what everyone should take from this is don't be afraid to use these resources, even if you're just by yourself. Um, they, like Dave said, they are there to help you. Just because you're by yourself doesn't mean that you should be scared to go, because that's definitely how I felt. I was like, wow, I'm going to go here by myself. It's going to be awkward to ask questions. I'm just that type of person, but um, I would... 100% as a STEM major recommend cosine because it is one on one tutoring. Someone is going to sit down with you and they're going to help you with the problem that you have so you're so you're not lost. Most of these um resources are kind of like like supplemental instruction. I recommend that as well. Um but it's kind of like another lecture they do um review and recap a lot of it and it's very helpful but if you need specific help with a certain problem cosine is definitely the place to go um si i really like it for um before exams 
the review is really good because they'll do trivia so it's engaging and they'll they'll talk to people so you're not just sitting there bored you like actually have to do the work and um work out the problems and then they they'll like have you talk to the people around you so you're constantly engaging and you're um learning as well so just don't be afraid like i was especially in the summer um the summer is fun but you're there to also get your work done um don't skip class you need to go so i recommend that as well so. and, and we're uh certainly going to have your peer mentors along to help you uh you know get, encourage you to do the things uh, that you need to do including these academic resources i'm going to highlight one of the specific resources i just talked about the drc or the Disability Resource Center. Um, this is uh, time sensitive. Uh, they will become very, very busy uh, toward the beginning of summer session as well as the beginning of the fall semester. If you are looking for some sort of accommodation, like a, a common one is extra time on tests or quizzes, you'll want to submit that earlier than later, just because uh, it's, it's kind of a rough if you don't get that accommodation in place until several weeks into the semester, you obviously lose out on a, a, a few things there. So it's pointing that one out specifically. You can find this uh, very page right here. Uh, simply just Google Purdue Disability Resource Center and that, uh, that'll get you access into that. Okay, so now that we've talked about uh, the advantages and uh, kind of common day and such, I'm gonna go uh, talk a bit about enrollment options and Online or in person, uh, I just want to reemphasize both of these have academic and financial benefits. Either way, you're winning if you're doing online or in person. Again, the in person has that social ad, um, but here on this page are just some sample pathways for both early start options. One note, in case you're not familiar with the, phrase, the terminology synchronous and asynchronous, uh, asynchronous means that it's not happening at a specific time. Typically, uh, you're going to have those maybe lectures uh, is going to be your most common thing. You'll have those pre-recorded. You'll be able to uh, play those at your time and convenience. So I know there's plenty of you from outside the country, uh, other side of the country. Then you won't have to do what is a synchronous class and meet at a specific place or time, say at uh, two o'clock in the Eastern time in the afternoon, which may not be very, uh, very useful time for you wherever you're from. All right, and oh, again, I, I put a note for myself to remind myself here that uh, the in person again, we 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 you know very much uh, heavily recommend that it's that where you can uh, build your community and find your people. So uh, this page here is popular on campus courses. Now these popular courses uh, meet the uh, all have in common they meet the university's core curriculum requirements. So uh, what that means is they're foundational courses for all students, regardless of your discipline or major. Um, this is what Purdue's way of making sure that you all have a similar educational experience across programs and across colleges. Uh, so these just put there because they're a sampling of courses offered in the summer that are going to apply to everybody. Now, uh, this is nowhere near a comprehensive list of classes. There's uh, over 850 courses offered this summer. Obviously, that's not the full Purdue catalog, and you not in any semester you're going to have the full catalog, but um, this is a lot. 850 is a lot. Uh, with the help of your academic advisor, you're going to identify best options for your major, your needs, and your course load. And there's not uh, a student that's come through Early Start that hasn't been able to find a full course load during summer. So uh, I uh, will get a little bit more to academic advisors here. Uh, this next thing, because uh, one of the um, drop in here frequently asked questions that uh, we had already in the chat beforehand is when can I choose my classes? What classes am I going to take? Can I take this class? Some variations of that question. So, first off, uh, before I get there, you're going to first need to switch into early start. If you haven't done so, uh, we'll go on to a, a, into the, the specifics in a, another pay, a couple pages here. But the getting into early start is going to get you in the right queue for summer processes and classes. And then after you complete a few items, so especially uh, Purdue 101, 
is something you'll be hearing about more and more. That opens May 2nd. Uh, after you do that and, and uh, your student identification form, uh, your Purdue 101 is going to kick off a notification to your academic advisor once you complete that, that, hey, you got one, and they're going to reach out to you to schedule a meeting that will likely play, take place sometime in the vicinity of mid-May. So when can you get your classes and what classes are you going to take? You're going to start that heavy lifting mid-May. But what you need to do on your end is make sure you complete that Purdue 101. And that, uh, again, opens May 2nd. Be on the lookout for that. And you're very, very eager to get into your classes, get that going. Uh, finish Purdue 101 sooner. Uh, it, it's not something after your finger poised over the keyboard at the stroke of midnight on May 2nd, but get it done as soon as you can so you can get that uh, choice of academic advisor appointments. So a key point for our purposes here is stay on top of your new student task list. That's where you find those things that uh, SIF student information form and that uh, information about Purdue 101. Keep tracking also your at purdue.edu email address. Everybody Purdue is gonna start sending you emails there. So if you haven't gotten the habit of checking that, please do. And uh, before your academic advisor meeting, you'll want to switch into early start prior to that meeting. List here some some summer some sample summer online courses. That was a mouthful. Um, this is a whole bunch of text, uh, and again, it's not uh, it's by no means a comprehensive list of um, online summer classes. Mostly, this is here again just to demonstrate there are lots of classes in the summer. You can access a full catalog through our website. If you are uh, eager to do that now, you can Google Purdue and Early Start, and then click on in that web page, which is just our home web page for Early Start, click on the Early Start Courses button. And then if you uh, click into that, you're gonna to wanna to do one more click into the full list of classes link. All right, so what's next? Well, as I hinted at, uh, we want to uh, have you accept your offer of admission to Purdue if you haven't done so already. So if you're still out there kind of like, eh, I'm not sure about Purdue, uh, it's gonna be the first thing that has to uh, happen before uh, you can move into the next piece, ne next piece, which is switching into uh, early start. So you uh, get, uh, once, once you've accepted your offer of admission, it would take a couple days to be able to access the early start form, but uh, that is in the application portal, back in the application portal, and it's in the reply, reply forms tab. You can also, uh, you don't have to memorize the, the things I just said or re revisit this uh, webinar on our website and that homepage, there's also a, hey, how do I get into early start? And it will walk you through that uh, even better than I said. Uh, another uh, reminder, you're gonna apply for summer aid uh, and also, uh, be sure to complete your housing applications. The most important one is finish that uh, annual uh, academic year housing contract as soon as possible. So if you've accepted your offer of admission, you haven't finished your academic year contract, do that because those deadlines are very meaningful. Summer is a little bit more flexible, but uh, we want to uh, get you into your housing for the academic year as soon as possible. Okay, so moving along, there's some important dates. I'm going to just uh, rip through here for a moment. The uh, key dates uh, to a specific to early start. Uh, there's there's a ton of things happen. I get I get it in the next few weeks, um, but the uh, the, the uh, Purdue 101 opening May 2nd. I put that on this slide. We already talked about that. I have early start residential preferred deadline. So why is May 3rd? That seems like kind of a random day on a Friday. Well, um, May 5th is the preferred, the priority housing, the summer housing deadline. So May 5th, if you roll back two days from that, that's where we get the May 3rd, because it will not instantly pop up. It being the housing contract will not instantly pop up once you switch to early start. It takes a couple of days for processing and such. So be, uh, uh, be you know, if, you're, if you wanna eliminate all drama, Try to switch into early start by May 3rd, or actually you can do it now and just uh, get that off your off your plate. Um, there is May 19th as the final date to complete your housing contract. Um, that is a, a very important date for your annual, um, your academic year contract. Uh, and then we have June 13th as final deadline to switch into early start. 
that's primarily is going to be speaking to online folks. If you're trying to still do residential, um, then you can certainly, uh, you know, work with me. We can see what we can do. But uh, really, if you're getting that late in the game, we're probably looking more likely as an online student. Um, there is some key dates here as well for what we're going to be doing. The uh, early start move in is July 6th. So. Put that on the calendar, of course, a very important thing. Early start move in July 6th. And then the 6th and 7th is our free weekend orientation. That's where you'll meet your pair mentors. Hopefully some of you will be uh, lucky enough to have Avery as your pair mentor. And uh, you'll meet her in, in, uh, in the flesh on that day, the, the July 6th. You'll uh, be, you know, she'll help you walk through the, the weekend, make sure that things go smoothly so that by Monday, which is the start of classes, that July 8th, then the, uh, also note, uh, in all all semesters, summer your your tuition is due on the first day of classes. So that would be for this five week semester, the uh, summer tuition due to July eighth. Classes do go though from July eighth to August 9th is the last day of summer session classes, and then uh, we have BGR I, which is BGR Boiler Gold Rush International, runs August twelfth fourteenth, and then we have BGR uh, that is August fifteenth to August nineteenth. And then uh, bam, Monday, uh, August 19th, that's fall, uh, first semester day, uh, day of semester, first day of fall classes. All right, so I'm gonna hit a couple of frequently asked questions and then we'll have a few more minutes to talk, uh, answer questions that have been answered in the chat already. One of the uh, recurring questions that we have uh, is the, can I switch my residence hall? Or often it's, do I have to switch my residence hall? Um, the answer is university residences tries very hard to put you in the residence hall, the dorm room that you're going to have uh, for summer, fall and spring. They don't want a whole bunch of people having to move around, um, but it does happen. And the reasons, couple of the primary reasons for that is because you have a specific roommate request, perhaps that is not in the summer that is going to move into the, uh, to the uh, onto campus in the fall. And so you may have to switch to match up with that person. Of course, an easy fix for that is have them come to summer with you, so you you get started right away. Another one is if you have a residential a learning community with a residential requirement. So if you have uh, you know learning community like women in engineering is one example. You may have to move to accommodate that. Now, having said that, I had nightmares a couple of years ago worrying about students moving dorms and such. And a couple of students were kind enough to come back to me, give me the feedback, like it's not that big a deal. They they really didn't have a hard time with it because you're going to have help. There's uh, peer mentors, there's RAs, there's uh, men, you know other mentees that are in that peer mentor group, and people are going to be around one to try to help you out. And it's also not like you're moving a four bedroom house. It's it's going to be a fairly modest amount of stuff. Next up is can I have my car on campus? Uh, yes ish. Uh, yes during the the summer for sure you can have it. Um, university residences spaces are are not enforced during the summer, and, and uh, I anticipate that's going to be the, the case this summer as well. Um, they are marked obviously by white signs. Basically, a good rule of thumb with all parking pretty much anywhere is read the sign, and uh, if if in doubt, apologies, really click. If in doubt, then uh, you know you can you can call, you can ask me. I know stuff. I'll I'll, try, I'll help you out. And then uh, one more mention of the financial aid. Yes, that the the financial aid's available. That's a thing that you can do. And uh, we're going to finish up there. That was fun. Um, so here's where we have the more questions. I uh, will pause for a moment and see if we can find out. There were some questions, common questions in the chat that we can share with everybody. So Dave, there's a question that um, I want to thank everybody for all of their questions. That tells me that they are attentive and interested in learning more. So I'm excited. Um, um, some question that people are asking is what time does everything start on July 6th? 
So the there's there's a few moving parts on July 6th. The move in is uh, and I've been doing this from memory. Apologies, and maybe off half hour or so. But move in to, uh, is uh, I believe 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. somewhere in that ballpark. So you will choose out a time to move in. University residents does a great job of sending a whole lot of information beforehand, and they'll organize a half hour, I believe it is, block of time for you to move in. I'm going to be there checking in at uh, one of the dorms. Uh, we'll have a lot of staff from uh, Office of Summer Winter Sessions. Some of the peer mentors going to be around to help with that move-in check-in piece from nine to two in those block windows. Um, the next time up that you're going to have to be aware of is, I believe, it's two thirty when uh, we start to rally in, and we, by that I mean the students, start to rally in Memorial Mall. Two thirty, three o'clock in the afternoon is is when you basically do the. Bye bye to you know parents say bye to the the, the kids and uh, uh, we'll go separate ways. There are uh, there's an orientation specifically and only for the students that will take place in Loeb Theater. Could be the first thing after you meet up with your peer mentor Memorial Mall, which is a big grass area grassy area just outside of where the Loeb Theater is, and then uh, parents. I anticipate we're going to have uh, for you as well a parent orientation session that runs concurrently with that. So, uh, if, if you have extra questions or uh, want to know some more about what's going on at Channel Learn today, and you haven't got the questions beforehand, we'll we'll be sending out emails and such about that. Great. And so another question is from a parent, and they're wondering what do students do the week between summer and fall session? Are the dorms open? Excellent question, and I had intended. Thank you for reminding me. I had had intended to cover that when I talked a bit about BGR Boiler Gold Rush. So we encourage, we recommend uh, any student that participates in Early Start, go ahead and go into to Boiler Gold Rush. They will. That's a big orientation. That's where the bulk of the freshman class are going to be showing up during that as well. Um, that is a very condensed program, and and it's uh, not going to give you quite the the whole. Uh, sense for belonging and community that you get from early start, but it is a, it's a great program. We recommend you participate in that. There is a fee to do boiler gold rush. And if you, if you do that, then you just stay con continually. From after the program ends the summer, 5 weeks of summer ends boiler gold rush will be the weekend between and then fall semester starts and you never have to move out or, or change anything. If you do participate in boiler gold rush. Now, let's say that you're like, I want to get out of there. I, I just need, I need a space for, for a few days between semesters. That's fine too. Uh, you don't have to move your stuff. There is a storage fee. I believe it's $35 a day that you need to pay for the time that uh, your stuff is occupying just kind of as a placeholder. Um, so, you know, do Boiler Gold Rush. Um, if, by the way, uh, the fee is a problem, uh, there are ways to to uh, there, there's a, an option to try to get that waived. You know, certainly, you can uh, reach out to me. I can direct you to uh, the, the the where's and the hows of that um, at some some later date. Great. And another question that came in recently is: Is having a summer part time job possible, or will it get in the way of participating in the activities offered at Early Start? Yeah, we, we have students that do the summer part time jobs. Um, even the peer mentors, a few of those have summer part time jobs. It's about obviously setting priorities and, and uh, time management and such. And uh, some some are wildly successful at having that part time job while doing it. Uh, some it's not as as easy. You know, it's, it's a it's just about coming in with the I need to organize my time and the prioritizing. Obviously, the schoolwork. Um, you know, you got to work at some point, sometime. So it's uh, finding an employer that's flexible, and there's a lot of those around campus. It's it's a, you know, it's it's college community. So everybody I, I gets it that there's you know college students and they have tests and they have other obligations it's about communications and the priorities. Avery, do you want to also talk about the part time job? Um. Yeah, I ha I have not had a part time job here at Purdue. Um, I might this summer though, but I know my peer mentor at Layla, she worked in university residences, and um, basically what they do is they help with the 
um, like the mailboxes and the postage and stuff. And she said that there's a lot of time to, you can sit and do your homework at the desk while um, there's no students coming up and stuff. So she had a lot of time to do her work through there. And I know I had a friend work at the co-rec as well as a part-time job in the summer. It's, I'll add, it's, it's a great time to be asking the question because uh, once summer starts, students that are reactive are gonna be looking for those jobs then. You might wanna start looking at the job board now or you know, a few weeks before, just to try to get that job landed before you show up on campus. We are in the last four minutes um, before we wrap up. And so a question that came in, I do wanna re reiterate that this presentation is being recorded and will actually be available on our website. So for those of you who either wanna review it later or share it with someone who was unable to attend, it will be available for them. And I saw a lot of students mention that they were interested in attending either emerging leaders or um, science leaders of tomorrow or other um, EABC, other early start programs, but they are academic specific. And so we'll see you on campus if you are attending those programs. Those programs attend the same time frame as Early Start. We didn't list all the different programs that fall under our Early Start program, but those are there. And I'm looking through to see if there were any additional questions in our last two minutes. I saw one flash up on my screen of, uh, can you opt back out of Early Start if you get into it and have some sort of complication? The answer is yes. Yeah, you can do that. Up until, sorry, I'm looking over at my happy little sheet. Um, up until June 13th is the last date you can switch back out of it. Having said that, if you sign a housing contract, you have to make sure that you cancel the housing contract. So if if you get to that point, you'll, you'll again be very welcome to reach out to me. I can help with that. Dave, do you want to share a, an email or is it online? Is it on the screen? It is on the screen. Yes. So we have a text number as well as an email that if Anna and I did not get to your individual questions in the chat, and we tried to, and I think we got to most of you, uh, please send an email or a text message um, to your question. And I'm hoping that Dave covered a lot of the uh, questions in the presentation. Very good. Yeah, so um, I'll just say thanks again for those of you that came participated. Uh, we get that there's a lot of logistics, a lot of questions, a lot of stress with all this, and Office of Summer and Winter Session is here to help out. So please do take advantage of that email address, the websites, reach out to uh, us, and we'll get back to you. We'll get you sorted out.